Ladies and gentlemen, oh my God, we hit the road. We hit the road, the road in the sky. Took an airplane over to New Jersey. Guess where we landed? Right at Brigantine Beach. We talked to Jimmy McHugh of McHugh's Pizza on the island. One of the best, one of the greatest. Been open for 38 plus years. Jimmy shared the sage advice, the secret sauce is the work-life balance. Jim McHugh himself has been an owner of a pizza shop since he was 18 years old. Pizza has been part of his life since day one. Jimmy shares with us that he's never fired anyone in 38 years. He has a 1% turnover rate, doesn't have to deal with third-party delivery or Instagram for that matter. I'm telling you right now, I might take a trip to Brigantine and open up my own business because it sounds like he's living in a utopian paradise. <laughs> The business comes to him, living on the island. There's island homes. The summer incurs a huge rise in sales that does fall off in the winter. We talk about how he deals with that and everything else on the island. This is a pure family owned and operated business. He works with his wife and his son. This is a real special one and you'll find out why. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoy this conversation. I did, I always do. Hope you do too. Jimmy McHugh, McHugh's Pizza, Brigantine Beach. Let's go. Thank you for doing this, Jim. No problem. My pleasure. Are you ready? Sure. Fire away. All right. What attracted you to pizza and who ultimately taught you how to make it? Wow. Well, it started back in elementary school. My mom worked at the pizza shop across the street from our elementary school. And back in the day, you could actually let your kids go home for lunch. And, and, and as crazy as this sounds today, our peers, there was a thing called crossing guards back then. I don't know if they have them nowadays. I doubt it highly. But your peers would be like lieutenants and this, and they had these badges and, and, and things on. And they would cross you across the street. So we would go home. I would walk about a mile home. But then the pizza shop opened up and it was right across the street. She got a job there. So we'd go over there, have a slice and do the soda machine and all that stuff. And that's what got in. That's how it got into my blood. You know, just go in there at Lou's Pizza in uh, in Seacane, Pennsylvania. <laughs> your your mom? My mom. There? Yeah, wow. she got a, you know, an afternoon job to get out of the house, answering yeah. the phones, you know, serving slices and stuff like that. And uh, we'd go over and visit her since it was across the street and. Oh, this is cool, you know, that type of thing. And then as we got jobs, they get like, um, I have two brothers. I have a pizza brother and a military brother. So the military brother is like eight years older. So when he graduated high school, my pizza brother is a couple years older than me, Brian. He got his job type of deal at Manor House Pizza in the, in the Norwood, Pennsylvania. One, and then when my brother graduated, Brian, I got his job. So like ninth to like 12th, they was like our first jobs from a local family that I grew up with, uh, uh, one of the daughters. And uh, that's how it started. I've, uh, and it's been pizza ever since. You know, I've had three jobs in my life, three types of jobs. Pizza, I delivered a newspaper, and I cut my next door neighbor's grass, and that's it. It's been pizza for probably, I'm 50, I'm almost 58, so it's been pizza for like uh, 40 years. Nothing else. Yeah, 44 years, something like that, yeah, nothing else. So, you got into it pretty young. It, Very. Was this what was this always the vision? Did you always yeah, want we to figured, own a shop? Yes, we figured we'd go back to Pennsylvania, and and buy the pizza shop that we grew up in, uh, because we knew the kids weren't going to take it over type of deal. Yeah. Or they weren't interested at the time. They wish they did now because they're they're kids and all that stuff. But uh, it, it's a funny thing. We used to go to Wildwood and work a couple summers in Wildwood, and my brother Brian worked for a guy named Nino. Uh, from Pizza City, and at the time was three brothers in Wildwood. So uh, he was coming out of Harris one night. He was in college for, to be an accountant, and he came out of Harris, and they turned the wrong way. He came in the Brigantine, and saw the Pizza City, Nino's Pizza City. And he goes, "How many people are named Nino?" He goes, "It has to be this guy." And so he went in, and there he was. He's like, "Yo, you want to come work for me?" You know, and he's like, ah, "I'm in. I'm in school. I'm going to be an accountant or whatever." And then. Two months later at school, he's like, oh, this sucks. 
<laughs> he goes, hey, you still need help? And that's how we found Brigantine because I never heard of Brigantine growing up. Yeah. Other than the Haunted Castle. Yeah. There used to be down the North End. Uh, it was a big, scary castle. And it, that was the only ride basically on it. It was like games and food and that type of stuff. But uh, every year there'd be, a, a, you know, the commercials for that. And it's like the Brigantine Castle. And it's like, wow, you know, never heard of it, <laughs> you know, until I came down here. And that was... 1984, I graduated high school in 84. Graduated, right. and then, so did you move to the island? Yeah. Yeah. Well, my brother was here a couple years earlier. Okay. So he lived down on Quay Boulevard, down the North End. So uh, I would come visit him every once in a while. And then when I, I was graduating high school, I said, I'll come down, we'll work, you know, save our money, and then go back to Pennsylvania. And then one thing led to another. We, uh, our old partner had a pizza shop on the Haunted Castle, and then he bartended at an old bar, the, the Lagoon, and Brian, the Pizza City was right next door, so they would talk, and one thing led to another, and he's like, I need people to invest that know what they're doing, and we're like, hey, we're young, you know, I was 18, and Brian was 22, it's like, you know, what the heck, you know, if we lose our money, we lose our money, we'll, you know, we're young enough, but. How did you get the, how did you, at 18 and 22, have enough money to invest into a restaurant? Well, half of it, my, uh, my father passed away okay. when I was 13, and uh, my mom saved some insurance money for from that. So like five thousand from that, and and five thousand that we had saved together type yeah. of deal, bought us in for a small percentage, like ten percent. Yeah. And uh, then we just worked our way up, bought bought more shares. Yeah. More percentages, and then after like the third or fourth year, our old partner went and opened up in Summers Point, and we uh, we bought him out over like a two year period because he was older than us. Of a hundred of a hundred percent. You yeah, because yeah, over the, over the first three years, we, we got up to like 40%. Okay. And then uh, and then we bought out the last 60% over to like the following two years. So, so you were like 23 years old as a business owner? Yeah. Well, 18, technically. Well, 18, as 18 and as a partner yeah, and then full, fully owner? At 22, 23. Holy shit. Yeah. Kind of crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty wild. Yeah. It, it's amazing how it happened. I mean, we're almost 39 years old and- Sometimes it feels like nine. Sometimes it feels like 39, but. Sometimes it probably feels like a lifetime. Yeah. It's like 60. But yeah, it's like, oh, you know, so. But it's it's been it's been a great ride, you know, ups and downs in any business. But yeah. I can't complain. This island's been great to us. What do you, what do you think the secret to being open this long is? Well, I, I think in our opinion, uh, my brother and I is, goes back to the manor house, the place that we grew up in. You find good people and then you you hire their family or their friends. You know, the birds of a feather flock together type thing. There's always going to be a bad apple in there somewhere, you know, of course. in your family. But the thing was like like drivers or grill guys or pizza guys, you say, hey, I, I'm getting my cousin a job. And then when it comes Thanksgiving or whatever, you're like, hey, man, I got you that job. You're doing, you holding up your end, you know, that they yeah. kind of police yeah, themselves. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? There's accountability. Exactly. Yeah. So, but, and that's what it really comes down to. If you hire good people, then that takes care of itself. Yeah. Like, I'm very lucky here that, you know, in the food business, you know, turnover rates, you know, anywhere from 20 to 30, 40%, some depending on where you are. And here we're like 1%. And, I, you know, that's. It's incredible. And, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's the word, I, you know. Yeah, it's like, but it's because you hire good people and good people. I guess, you know, the old saying, you know, treat people the way you want to be treated. Yeah. What, you know, what, what's the oldest employee that you have on? Here? Oldest? Like, will probably be Roy, my prep guy. Yeah. He's he, been here for. He, oh, well, in years. Oldest, he's like 65. Oh. But he's been here 20 years, if yeah. not more. That's incredible. Uh, One of my drivers, he likes to, likes to say he's been here uh, five decades. <laughs> and I'm like. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, all right, we're only going on 39 yeah, years, but 50, you're right. Yeah. 80s, 90s. Yeah, and I'm oh, like, you're not lying. Yeah. You know, but so he's he's the oldest. But other than that, you know, God, uh, my grill guys, 20 years, my you know, pizza guys. That's awesome. Like 10 years. Have, they've stuck around. Yeah. 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 It's a, and, you know, a lot of dry, and my drivers, you know, the, we joke that the only way you get a delivery job around here is if one of them dies. <laughs> you know but uh it's a hard it's a job small, to get it is you know so there's people always say, hey you hiring you hiring and it's like yeah you know put uh, you on a list you yeah there's a waiting list 
what being open this long, what has what has been like one of the most consistent issues or pain points that you've had to deal with that like keeps coming up? Something that maybe like is a pain in your ass for the last 30, 38 years. It's really just island life. Cause being on an island next to a big city like Atlantic City or you know, medium city, you know. But uh it's feast and famine. So you have to you have to if you're gonna be year round, I mean there's a lot of places that will go six months, eight months, but then they're rehiring everybody, you know, or, or a majority of everybody come April when yeah. they went, oh, you know, you're not getting the other they're not gonna sit around and wait four months for you to reopen, you know. Only certain people want to collect unemployment. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, as a, you know, and it's only a portion of your, your money. Yeah. But um, th- that's the, that's the hardest. It takes a while to get used to, but you have to, every year, like I'll, I'll look at my, my books and, and say, you know, after Labor Day, it's like, you know, it, it falls off a cliff, but it's only because you've been running sprints yeah. for three months that, you know, the marathon, you're like, and then you look at the numbers like, oh, well, that's what we did last year. So it's like, not too bad, yeah. you know? You just got to keep reminding yourself that it's it's it, that's the cycle of island life, yeah. you know, where, you know, and that's why a lot of big corporations don't come down here. There used to be a Burger King here 30 years ago, but there are things are they need a million dollars or whatever there's, you know, they say per store and it goes to 950. Close it. Yeah. Not and it's like, it. well, for 50, you know what I mean? It's like and that's what the casino you know, with casinos, they they bitch and moan, you know. Oh, they make good money in the summer and then they're not making money in the winter and then they'll lay everybody off. And it's like, you know this. So you have to store your nuts from the summer. But those guys, you know, big corporations are moving money other places, you know. So it's like they don't care about the little guy. So here what we do is like if you have your hours, you have your hours. You know what I mean? You're if you work 20 hours, you're working 20 hours all year long. If you're working 40 hours, you're working 40 unless you take off. You know, it's not. We're not laying you off or cutting hours. Yeah. You know what I mean? In the summer, there's more hours to have, but that's when the college kids, you know, are, that have been working. At, and that's the thing. We we hire, like, say, phone girls, you know. You're, you're, uh, we, you know, might start them at, you know, 15, 16 years old. But once, you know, and then once they, they groom into, you know, um, you know, get more comfortable. Yeah. And then, you know, like there's junior and senior year when they're driving, then they want more hours and, you know, but you, you give them a little bit, like almost like lunch money. You yeah. know what I mean? Like five hours a week, get them off the parents' payroll. Yeah. Let them yeah, earn yeah, some yeah. money for school. And then they, uh, by the time and the, they're ready at senior or going off to college, then every summer they come back, three or four of them that are like, hey, they're ready to hit the ground running because we don't have to train anybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's it. That's a good thing that way. So to deal with that influx of business, there kind of is that extra work every summer of people possibly coming home from school and being like, I want a job so that it's not tough when like there's all of a sudden that drop off. You're not firing anyone. Everyone's correct. Kind of, so everyone's already give me these hours now. I'm I'll, yeah. I'll leave. It's going to be fine. I'll see you next summer. Yeah, technically, it's almost it. like they're firing themselves. Yeah. But you know, laying themselves off for the winter, they come home and work Christmas when the when the regulars, hey, I could use a day off, yeah. you know, that type of thing. They just say, my school's done this time, or I, I go back to school. Like some leave back in August, some leave Labor Day. Yeah, you know, kind of find that the the the, the schools in the South, like Florida, Georgia's, they go back in August, but they're done in early May. Okay, and then the Northern schools go back in like September, and they're done in like uh, June. You know, how, how many how many people extra do you think you bring on in the summer? Probably about, gosh, probably about 10. OK, that's a fair amount of people. Yeah. Yeah, probably about what 10. Do, what, what what do you think like sales jump? Like what's the percentage well, we of probably, that jump? Like in the summer, we probably do about. Between May and September, we probably do probably about 40. 40% of our business for the whole year. Damn, that's in crazy. In three months. Yeah. You know, because it's just the island just gets so crazy. Yeah. And you're just running at full speed, you know. And then the other, the you know, the other nine months is just, you know. There's there's the shoulder months. April and May, good weather, it's good. You know, September, October, good weather, is good. 
January, February are usually our worst months. You know, that's when it's really cold and windy. Yeah. And you'll see the, you know, the older people, hey, we're going to Florida, we're going to Arizona or whatever. We'll see you in April. Yeah. You know, that type of yeah, thing. Yeah, it's yeah, like, okay. Birds. Do you guys get cranking on Super Bowl? It, you know what? It's weird. We used to, and it all depends on who's in. Like, you would think that, say, the Eagles or the Giants yeah. are in it. You're like, great. But it's not, it, it doesn't come across that way. In the, in the numbers. Those guys, when you have that influx of fan base in this area, seem to be, at least in, for our store, that it's, they're having the big part, you know, either some are hunkering down and I don't want to be around anybody for the big game. I, you know, I, I want my team, I'm, you know, all yeah. by myself. Or they're having parties where they're cooking dinners and, you know, I mean, that type of thing. Yeah. Where the pizza and wings don't really come into play, maybe for the kids. But not for the whole party. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where, where, you know, Indianapolis versus Chicago might be a better game for us because everybody's like, ah, are you going to get together? All right, yeah. let's get together yeah. last minute. Oh, well, I'm not cooking. Let's get something. Yeah, okay. You know, that type yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. But when it's our teams are in it, it's like everybody's focused. What are we doing? You know what I mean? That's yeah. what I find because I'm like, oh, this should be great. And it's like, oh, yeah, this wasn't like, that good. Last, yeah. year was, but last year's Super Bowl was better. You know, that type of thing. What is the perfect pizza to you? Whoa. If I was, if I was ordering or buying a pizza just for myself, extra cheese pepperoni. Yeah. Yeah. The the two mainstays. That's the number one and two. Is your most popular pizza that you sell a pepperoni pizza? Topping wise, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Other uh, plain. Just a plain cheese. Large cheese is you know usually it because anybody you know, you're not making the kid mad. You're not making you know I can't have you know order half and half. If the pepperoni juice moves over to the, I can't have it, you know. I, I think plain pizza is the best. Too. Yeah. Um, yeah. You don't deal with third party delivery, do you? you Not don't at to, all. Yeah, you don't do. Or, the island's so small yeah. that we, and we're kind of in the middle of it. We can get anywhere on the island in five minutes. Yeah. One way or the other, one end. But, you know, if you had to go from the bridge to the north end, that's 10 minutes. Yeah. Hitting hitting the two traffic lights or three traffic lights. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're very, very lucky. Because I've had my drivers that, that have worked for other people over the years, and they're like, you could go one way 20 miles with one delivery. You know what I mean? I don't know if you're just in the city in LA, but- Three and a half miles radius. You, you have a radius yeah. and that's it. You yeah. cut it off. Yeah. So that kind of, if you're that customer that's three and a quarter, three and three quarters, you're like, oh, am I pissed off that you won't come an extra- Usually. 50 feet? Yeah. You know? here it's like we just stay on the island if we go over the bridge you'll go over the bridge to harris we just do the casinos we don't okay. go to houses okay we, and what we'll do is when we call like harris or golden nugget they call from there we tell them just like if it's a delivery to the beach the driver is going to call you when he leaves the store we're not coming up to your room we're not because the valet doesn't want you yeah messing blocking around. up you yeah. want you in and out. you meet in the valet Wherever it is, whether we're in the employee entrance, if it's an employee making the order. Yeah. We and if you're on the beach, we call you and you meet us at the, whatever street beach you're on. We're not going down because back in the day, it, when we would go into like you know, in the beginning, we'd go down on the beach or we'd go to the casino. Oh, they're, they're not going to be here for 30 minutes. I'm going to go for a swim or uh, I'm going to go pull a slot. Now you have no cell reception in certain spots. Yeah. So it's like, no, no, no. We meet at the valet. We meet at the beach. Be there. You get your food. If you don't answer your phone, you know, you know, please. Yeah. You know, it's not a spam call or something like that. Yeah, answer you, your you phone. You ordered food. It, we're calling you in, in 20, 30 minutes, you know. And you guys, you do, you've you done exclusively cash only, right? Yeah, we've been cash only from the get-go. So, so when, so is there situations where people just like don't answer or don't, and then like you're just shit out of luck. They bring the pizzas back. With cash only? Yeah. No. No? Never had that uh, where, where they don't have the money. Um, no, no. Like where like people aren't answering their phone or they're at the slots or they're like, going for a swim. Like you just have, oh, your, oh, oh. You just have your driver. Yeah. As a driver, I've uh, before. Be I've, yeah. I've yeah. Been, and I've waited like 35 minutes for somebody to no. drive home. Right. No, no. Well, if that's the case, if they're, if they're not where they're supposed to be, that if they don't answer the phone. Yeah. Then we're going on our other deliveries first. And come back. You know what I mean? Right. Or come, yeah, and they don't answer, it, or the driver will call the shop and say, hey, they're not answering my phone call. Can you call from the shop so the caller ID says, you know, McHugh's yeah, Pizza yeah, yeah, yeah. type of deal? So they'll answer their phone. 
And uh, nine times out of 10, that, that works. But it, there's always the, the rare person that's like, and then they'll call you an hour later, say, where's, where's my, my food? food? Well, yeah. you have 15 missed phone calls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. Check your phone. Eh, eh. Is it you, us? No, it's not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Back to the, the cash. Has there has there been any issues or like angry customers or being a cash business this long? Have you, I mean, like escaping credit card fees. I talked to you about this last time we sat yeah, down. Yeah. I mean, it's a pain in the ass. It can be upwards to four to $5,000 a month absolutely so going cash is i mean, mean, having cash only is is great in a lot of ways but has that ever been has there ever been a negative to that absolutely i'm i've always had people like customers say oh you know you should take credit cards you should take credit cards Uh, you know i'd order you know one more time a week and it's like would you you know i mean i mean i'm sure that would be the case sometimes where we where i personally find out that i I've missed the boat on orders is like doctor's offices. Only on when the sales rep comes in and wants to, you know, get a sub tray or a couple pizzas for the office. Yeah. And then they find out they don't have, we don't take credit card. And they're like, ah, you know what I mean? That type of deal. Um, Sometimes we're running through our Galloway store because they take credit cards. Okay. They do, but that becomes a pain in the ass, you know, with the, you know, uh, my sister-in-law processing it. Yeah. And then, reimbursing me and all that stuff. Yeah. You know, sometimes we occasionally done a Venmo, you know, my Situation. wife will pick up that, but it's like, do I, you know, do I look at that? Or the only, the one way I do look at eventually getting credit cards is online ordering. Yeah. If I go that route, that way, at least they're doing the work. You know what I mean? If they really need to use a credit card. But I just had a customer come in last night and she's like, oh, you're cash only. Okay. Or, Cause, or do you charge more for a credit card? And I said, well, we're cash only. I, you know, we have an ATM, it's yeah. only a quarter. Yeah. You know, it's as close to, you know, zero as I can get. And that saves us a little bit when, from people that are pissed. Yeah. That we don't take in this day and age credit cards. Uh-huh. But she's like, well, I don't like to pay that extra fee. Like some places charge three, four, five percent if you use a credit card. Yeah. Like the old gas station days where it was, cash was one price, credit was another. Now. Yeah. That's in restaurants and it's like some people it. get pissed. Yeah. Well. You know? And it's like and then you get the sales rep, like the, the, the credit card sales rep that comes in and to be like, oh well, you know the stats say if you use credit, that they will you know spend like 15, 20 percent more. And I'm like, yeah, if if you're at a restaurant and we're sitting down and we're having dinner, and you say, I'm putting it on my card, get an appetizer, get dessert, you know. Yeah. Can go bigger yeah. on the entree. Yeah. But at the pizza shop, you say, oh, you take credit? Oh, well, give me an order of French fries or give me another cheesesteak. You know what I mean? Or, yeah. That's not happening. When, yeah. when they order, I, you know, in my opinion, I could be wrong. 90% of the time, they're like, I want a pizza, I want a cheesesteak, and I want a two liter or whatever it is. They already have it in their mind what they're going to order for dinner. Yeah. And I don't think credit card, you know, gonna add those. It's gonna extra sales. Yeah, like you said, they're gonna be like, oh, oh, god, you take credit now. Let me get two more things. Yeah, and it's like, no, nah, you're not. Yeah, you know, like I said, we're we're a pizza shop. Yeah, if we were a sit down restaurant, I think it'd be a whole different ball game. You mentioned the cheese steaks. My father in love, father in law <laughs> loves the cheese steaks. Teddy, uh, yep. yeah, yeah. Uh, what what do you know? Like off the top of your head, because I talk a lot of owners and we. They all like to put sandwiches on their menu, but a lot of them don't sell that many. But I imagine your sandwich sales are probably pretty high just by oh, the yeah. amount of the cheesesteaks I've seen Teddy order. <laughs> yeah, he keeps us in business. Yeah, That's the thing. The locals are unbelievable. You know, that that's that's why we're here 39 years. You yeah. know, we have the influx of coming and goings and casino workers and all that stuff. But the, the brigantine locals have, have, is what kept us alive. Yeah. But uh, um, Your sandwich when it comes to the sandwiches, high. it's like pizza to grill stuff. It's literally 50-50. Really? Yeah. Pizza is 50%, but like hots to colds. Like I, I consider grill stuff, cheesesteaks, uh, cold subs, yeah. and appetizers. That's the grill section. So if it's cheesesteaks, cheesesteaks are probably about 25%. You know, cheesesteaks and chicken cheesesteaks, that type of thing. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. all the mushrooms or whatever you're getting on it, but cheesesteaks. And then cold subs are probably about 10 or 15%. And then appetizers are probably about 20%. 
you know, French fries, mozzarella sticks, yeah, that yeah, type yeah. of stuff. But pizza, you know, is that's straight up just small, medium, large. That's fifty percent of our business is pizza. That's yeah, that's in sales. Good. Yeah, it's good, pretty good, pretty good ratios. Did you did you always bake in these kind of ovens? Yeah, they're called Rotoflex ovens. Yeah, or yeah like they're companies out of Texas. Day one. Day one. They've yeah, always is, had these. So yeah. you never did brick ovens or... or uh, In Pennsylvania, these, I did. Yeah. But okay. it, these things are... There's Recommend them? I would. People get scared because they move. You know, they're rotating. When you're dealing with, with a Blodgett or a Baker's Pride, yeah, it's not moving. The, the pizza guy's like, oh, oh. what am I going to do? You know, I got to catch it. It's like... It's a merry-go-round. If you miss it or you miss your spot to put your pizza in, it's coming right back around in, in five seconds. What I do find with this, you save space. You kind of, you know, you're going vertical with your shelving. Yeah. As opposed to, so with the space that I have on my oven, that would take up about 14 feet of Baker's Prides of one, two, three, four yeah. type of deal. So you're saving the space. It's like 40,000 for an oven. But if you get four Baker's Prides, you're spending about 37000 know, Yeah. 40000 It's all about the same. And again, and now you have room. all your space. The People get scared. All oh, the moving parts, you know, the blowers. Yeah, that stuff breaks, you know. But you stay ahead of the game. You clean, you know, you clean your parts. It's not a problem. And then you don't get the Tony the Tiger marks on yeah, your arms. I, I know. I got them yeah, right here. there you go. Uh, when you reach for that back and the door's open, you're burning your Just, arm, your armpit, uh, whatever. You know, and, and, you, got and you don't have to rotate too. them. You know, no, I know. You know, you, know, so you don't have the hot no, and cold spots. There's no 180 no. you have to turn or anything? The only time I really do is if I'm in a rush, like the top shelf, it gets so hot near the shaft yeah. of the oven that you'll have to spin that one. But one, two or three shelves, once it's in, six minutes, it's out. And the reheat is good on like the, the bottom bricks. There's no yeah. like the floor heat. Is yeah, once you have like, you know, when you, t you put your pizza in and you take it out, there's that white circle. Yeah. You know? Once that circle is brown, you can go right on top of it. Once that flower is brown enough, that's hot enough. And do you, do you have to clean them or wash, like brush you them off or nothing? Never with water. You just scrape and brush. Oh, okay. Never with water because that can crack them. Do you, what is, is the repairs been shitty with those? Like Not at all. No? <clears throat> Blowers that circulate the air. Like there's a main blower that uh, circulates the gas and, and that's the main one you have to worry about. The other blowers are more for cooling down. So the, the door that you're on is not extremely hot it's blowing into the curtain to keep everything and it keeps the light bulbs cool. and then who do you who has to come out to to service these things there's a guy that's like a, there was a father son thing uh, and he just kind of services the whole east coast i think okay. he lives in ohio but he'll come out like he's hitting all the boardwalks and all that stuff a lot of times you don't see these uh ovens there's certain ones on boardwalks that have them okay usually they're in the backs of kitchens yeah so people don't you know, because we get people when it's busy to come in the summer and never seen it. No, like, wait what at the counter, yeah, like watching TV. And yeah. They're like, what? you know, the kids are watching it. Their pizzas go around. And yeah. It's, so, yeah, he, um, the father retired and then the son took over. And, uh, but now there's a, the, I, I think the Rotoflex is trying to get more people in the area to uh, help service. Yeah. Well, it's nice if, you have two as well. So if, Yeah, like, there's a backup really, that yeah. if something goes wrong, both are not usually going to break at the same time. No. You know well, what I mean? Knock on wood. Yeah. They're pretty big boys. They are. Yeah. They, they they look intimidating, but like, again, they, if that whole wall was no, Baker's Pride, yeah. you'd be like, that that looks that, intimidating yeah, too. Yeah, that looks You know, it's, it's 20 feet long. You know what I mean? Type yeah. of deal. I so, know, if you've ever moved to Baker's Pride, it's terrifying. And then how long is the cook time on your pizzas? Well, we bake at 550. So once it's in, six minutes. Okay. Once it's in, yeah. Beautiful. And it's pretty pretty quick, I think. Probably really nice for training, too. Yeah, Because absolutely. once you can get it off the paddle or whatever, you're not cooking on screens, right? Is it no. straight off the paddle? Yeah. Right off the paddle, yep. Uh, only thing we do in a pan is our Sicilians. Okay. That type of deal. But yeah, everything else. And like you said, the, when a guy comes in that hasn't worked with this oven, they get intimidated. No matter how many years you've been. Yeah. You know, it's different. I, I had a buddy, yeah, who, 45 years he looked at he made it his first pizza was an egg football season wonky. hey man yeah you know but second pizza he, was, he got the hang of it yeah but it's just like because it's moving they're like i gotta catch up to it and it's like no you just gotta just throw it right on like magic pull the carpet out you know you've been working with your brother for a very long time is has there been issues with with working with family i know your son works here yeah my you son work my wife. wife my daughter used yeah. to work here but like, yeah it, yeah between the two of us yeah <laughs> 
yeah, there's there's always issues because you know what? When we both worked here full time, our arguments would be, uh, well, Joey said, Brian, uh, Brian said that I could have off, you know, that would take, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. and then it will, Jimmy said, you know, and then we'd go, what the hell did you say that for? No, I, didn't, I didn't say it like that. Or, you know I mean? That it, usually the arguments come that way, you know, where someone's in the middle and we're not, you know, communicating all that much, but it's usually stupid shit. Yeah. Well, has communication gotten when it better comes over, to the year, huh? over the years? Over the years? It got better, yeah, because you know what? It's one voice now. <laughs> My brother just comes in and helps me in the summertime. Yeah. So once it became, you know, only what, you know, well, Jim said, because Brian was running, a, a, we had a place at, in a, a college. So he was out there for six years. And if I go to help him there, what is, you know, if someone says, hey, Jim, what do you think? What does Brian say? You know, when it's there. And when Brian's here, what does Jim say? Yeah. That's how it is now. But when we were both here full time, it was like, you know, they could, they can play it. They can play it. Yeah, yeah. sides again. Like parents. Yeah. Kids are going to play the parents. Mom said I could have it. Yeah. Dad said, you know, mom, dad said I could have the candy bar. Oh, I'm going to talk to your father. Yeah, then you got to go talk yeah, to dad. Know. And we're going to lose. Yeah. <laughs> Dads are going to lose to the moms, right? Do you, do you, so you guys still work together? Yeah. Brian uh, just in the summer. Okay. Just in the summer. Do you, so ever you come, go, do you ever go to Galloway? Never. No. I've never worked in Galloway. Is this the busier store? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think only because we're we've been here the longest but yeah. yeah just yeah it is but i mean were they in galloway they have a lot of influence with casinos when people start getting laid off they slow down you know what i mean because yeah. the people you know galloway has a lot of casino workers compared to the island used to be an island had a lot but now it's so expensive here that you know normal people aren't living here you know yeah. it's second and third homes type of deal and is that becoming like more of a normal thing it's on getting this island way. where yeah they're knocking down the little guys yeah. all the time every every like a lot of people i've noticed every time i come back is there's more bigger houses coming up there's lots for sale and so are people kind of just selling their houses you think yeah there was there's two moves in 2008 with the housing right before the bubble you know if you were a, a young couple you know and you you might have struggled to buy a house on the on the bay for like two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars, and all of a sudden you get a knock at your door, and the guy's like, "I'll give you five hundred thousand dollars for your house." Yeah. Well, it's a no brainer. Then yeah. they 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 buy, you know, they sell and they go off there. But then you you can't you're not get back on the island. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Same now with the with the building. Now it's really the mansions. Like we find that like in the summer, you'd have to pick. Like say you're going to visit your your in laws. Yeah. Not not everybody's going to visit, you know, not 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 Ted and not, you know, Michelle. They're not all visiting at the same time. Like if you were out of town. Yeah. It's like you have to pick what weekend you're coming. To, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Where now they knock down a regular house and they're putting up these slammers, five bedrooms and this and that. I know they're huge. Now everybody can come every weekend. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where it used to be two or three cars in the park in, in the driveway. Now there's five or six cars in the in the driveway because... We can go see grandmom and grandpa every weekend. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it, where before you had to pick and choose, you know, so there's just, these houses are big. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> big. I, they, they, it seems like they're just getting bigger too. Yeah. I mean, I know they look, a lot of them are raised too. That's true. It makes it, yeah. But it makes me even that, look but, monsters. Yeah. Speaking of Sandy, how did that, how did that affect you? I mean, that was pretty chaotic on that the That was crazy. We were, you know, the island was closed for three days. Nobody knew what was going on, you know, type of deal. Uh, but for the people that stayed, you know, because not everybody evacuated, but people stayed. This island is, it looks flat, but it's not flat whatsoever. You know, the south end, when you come into Brigantine, is the high end of the island. The north end back by the golf course and all that stuff. And the, there's some marinas back there. That could be four or five feet lower, but it, it doesn't feel like you're going downhill when you're driving or yeah. walking till the water comes in, you know? And there's some places back on the golf course where water went up over the curb across the street. And the neighbor on the other side of the street got three feet of water in his house. Yeah. And it's like, how does that happen? You know what I mean? But uh, when the island reopened, we were very very lucky that we are the high end of the island so i very little water got in here at all yeah it got up in into my front door but 
the back end of the shop is a foot lower. That got in the back, like it seeped in from the alley through the concrete walls. And and uh, at the time, my like uh, security system, camera, you know, the, the computers were down low. They got wet. That's the only thing that affected me physically. Yeah. Business wise, you know, we lost, you know, three days of business. But when it re when the island reopened, everybody was just so you know, like figuring shit out that they were so happy that we were open that in the three days, three or four days after opening, we basically made as the, the money that the three days we were closed back. Yeah. You know, for for the time of year it was. And uh, you know, so when I talked to my brother back then, it was like, you know, we gotta do something. I said, you know, the 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 employees didn't ask to be closed, you know what I mean? They didn't want to take off, you know what I mean? So we, you know, since the money came back to the business that we ended up not losing anything, we paid everybody their regular oh, that's pay, a, that's you know incredible. what I mean? Because yeah, like I said, it's days. not, yeah. it's not their fault. It's nobody's fault, you know, you know, you know, it's a God influenced thing, you know, yeah. you can't control. But if we opened up the doors and no business, we'd all be in the same boat. But if we open up the business and we're getting our butts kicked and, and you make back the money that you, you missed on the days that you were forced to be closed, there's no reason that, you know, like Everyone you said, it's not the piece. employee's fault. Yeah. It's not, you know, and so we, we, we feel that this is a family, of course, you know, family run business. So, you know, you, you got to keep family tight, you yeah. know I mean? Figure, you know, worked out. Yeah. Yeah. So we were lucky that way. How do you define success in this business or what is your definition of success? Longevity, like for being around this one and the, and the friendships, like treat people Learn names, you know, that's one thing we were taught back in the day. Learn your customers' names, learn about them, you know, talk to them. Because when it becomes personal, then, you know, when shit goes wrong, they're gonna, you know, your friends and your family or whatever are gonna have your back Yeah. type of deal. So that, you know, that to me, knowing all the people that I know, that's success. Yeah, the personal touch. Yeah, the money comes with it, but yeah. it's not all about money. You know what I mean? You got to have family life. I know so many people that have been, you could work a hundred hours easy in these, in this business, but you're not going to watch your kids grow up. You're not going to coach baseball or, you know, whatever, little league hockey, yeah. anything like that. And those years you'll never get back. You know, once your kids 15 to 20, they're lucky if they, you know, they're working with you or they want to be around you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, Cause you're yeah. like, you know, you weren't there. Yeah. You're basically like an uncle. Not a dad or, or, or a mom. How have, I mean, how have you maintained that work-life balance? It's hard, but you just got to sacrifice. A lot of people, especially in the beginning, you don't want to give up the money. You know, the extra payroll and this and that. But you got to sit there and, and think about it and say, if are you losing $100,000 in payroll or are you losing $10,000 in payroll? Like, it all depends. Like, you want to be an absentee owner? All right, yeah, you're going to have a lot more payroll, but... In, we were never like that you know we're when we're getting our butts kicked we're all yeah, getting our butts kicked you know what i mean and i think that also helps to come back to the why we have such a low turnover rate yeah because we're in the trenches just like everybody else it's not like hey can you work a little faster yeah as i'm standing on the other side of the counter going hey yeah you know yeah you know what i mean if i'm getting Give my ass kicked if i'm all flowered up and yeah. or you know french you know whatever I think that goes a long way too. Of course. You know, when your employees, you know, see you doing it too. You know I mean? Yeah. Cause there's so many people that just want to be. Lead by example. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Lead by example. And that's what everything, whether it's sports, I think life, you know, with your kids, lead by example. They're going to watch and see what you're doing. Yeah. Like I say, if you're an absentee father, they might be absentee kids. They might have, you know, when they grow up to be absentee fires, whatever, but you know. I, I think when you're in it, you're in it, yeah. you know, and, and, and people see it, you know, your customers see it they're like, wow, these guys are all, you know, killing it. Yeah. You know, and you get complaints. Some people are like, oh, where's my food? It's like, you know, there's 10 other the people in front yeah. of you, the but way. they're all seeing yeah. that there's, you know, 10 know. slips up. Yeah. You know, so no one sees that though. No, no. When they're hungry, they're hungry. Yeah, exactly. That's we just don't want them hangry. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know. That's when it gets, that's, that's when it gets ugly. That's when my wife is the scariest. <laughs> Uh, She's the best. Uh, do you, Both of your wives, man. 
I They're like, well on killers. that on that question. This is a very special podcast because Matt, the man behind the camera, and myself, Jimmy, actually employed both of our wives, Casey and Jackie. Yep. And so this question. Do you ever think about maybe the footprint that you have had on individuals that you have employed, such as like these two people? I, I employed Casey as well. Right. She talked about you all the time. Jack has talked about you all the time, being like one of the best bosses. And wow. like, you know, this is how we did it. Right. You know, like th that those formative years being so young and having that first job here with you, <coughs> like. That's something that somebody carries for the rest of their life. You know? You're right. I, I, yeah, I agree. Uh, I don't really think about it. I just try, like you said, lead by example. I try to, but it's, it's when people go away and maybe come back and they'll be like, this is such a well-oiled machine. And I'm like, really? Because I only, you only know what you know. Yeah. And that's why I like, when I get people that actually come from other places, I'm like, well, you know, how, you know, we, we, you know, where we put our food or for our prep or, you know, to make a sandwich or this and that is this try to get the flow. Right. So we're trying to work on less stress, more, produ you know, productivity. Yeah. Right, you know, and that's with the expansion and all that came in into play, but I don't know it until people come back and tell me, you know, or like, like when the girls would come home and uh, like uh, for the last time, well, Jackie was here when you were, when you guys came back, but um, Casey and, and her sister Erica will come in and when she started working for you out in LA and she's like, I tell them all the time. I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa, don't go tell them nothing. You know, and she's like, no, 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 no. it's the good stuff. Yeah. Like, how we can do things this way to save time or what? And I'm like, all right, you yeah. know, yeah, yeah. this guy's going to hate me and he no, doesn't even know no, me. No. And, and she's like, no, 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 not that way. But, you know, that that's what, you know, like I said, when people go and, and come back and say, this is, yeah, you know, I, I worked in another place and it's like, it's just pure chaos. Yeah. And it's like, really? Like, you know, I have worked in other places and I didn't feel like any of those were chaos, but they're like, oh no, I guess it all comes down to like, whether you're an absentee or, you know, or some people get into food, anybody can eat, but not everybody can cook or make pizza or whatever, you know what I mean? But anybody can eat it. Yeah. But they think, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open, you know, or like, you know, these uh, corporate guys or I'm going to open a restaurant. I'm going to open a pizza shop. Yeah. There's a lot of money in it. It's, you know, yeah. a lot of profit. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, OK, come on in on a Friday night. Yeah. And see if you're crying by the end of the night. Yeah, of course. In the and corner. Do you want to do you want to continue this? Yeah. And then they'll do that. And they're like, they, they realize they get in over their heads. They might throw money into equipment or whatever, but they have no idea. And when shit hits the fan, they don't know how to can keep the the pressure down on everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? I talk about like when, you know, when you walk in, does the, you know, the stress levels lower yeah. when you walk into the room or, is there, or do they go yeah. higher? Cause Oh, he's here. Yeah. And he sucks. Cause I've been to places <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, you know, cause I eat pizza. I yeah. go to places. I'm like, you can't eat my food all the time. Yeah. But I eat pizza all the time. And they're like, you go to friends and they're like, Oh, we were going to order pizza. I'm like, yeah. Okay. And they're like, you sure you want to eat pizza? I'm like, I love pizza. Yeah. But I, as long as I'm not floured up and making it, oh, I'll try it. You yeah, know, different just story. wherever. And they're like, oh, yeah. But I'm going to shops and I'm watching, and you, you know, you just sit there, you know, as a, as a, oh, yeah. You're in the business. You're oh, always yeah. looking. Oh, yeah. You know, you, and I'm like, I'm watching this one guy, this owner, and I'm like, you, dude, are a human speed bump. Get out of their way because yeah. you're just slowing everybody up. Yeah. He's coming in, wrapping a sandwich. Like a turtle. Yeah. And I'm like, they got 10 sandwiches to wrap. Get the hell out of the way, dude. Yeah. Know your limits. If you're the idea guy, stay on ideas. Yeah. If you're the, if you can do everything, work and play, okay. Yeah. But it, you got to know that you're a turtle. And I'm like looking at, I'm like, get the hell out of these guys. And I'm watching the employees and you can just see the steam coming out of her ears. Like he's here again. You know, he's in my way. Yeah. So. Well, crazy. You, you, you mentioned like you can, well, even if you can cook and, and, you know, you want to open up a restaurant, I think the harder thing is as an owner is like being the captain, running the ship, you know, and doing it in like a calm, collective way where you're not getting in the way or you're not an asshole. You know what I mean? True. And 
All true. Uh, and you can be an asshole. I mean, and then and then putting that print on like what I'm saying is like you've been doing this for so long, and I've I know two people personally who you know these were their first jobs, and it's like you. It's kind of like it made me think about this because it's like, man, I wonder like how many people's lives I've I've touched in a positive way and maybe ha in a negative way. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's like if it's somebody's first job, it's like this is their introduction into the workforce. And it's like it's something maybe I should take a little bit more seriously because like it's great to hear Jackie and uh, Casey talk about like how much fun they had here. Right. And like what a great place it is because, you, you know, and then you're going to want to take that to every job. You're right. You know, that you're that, that yeah. you're in. Yeah. You're so, right. I'm very lucky that yeah. way. I mean, and yeah. it's, it sounds like obviously you got a title. It's shit, but you seem like a good you're a good dude. And not <laughs> not everyone is. I fooled you. Know, you, huh? you know, <laughs> not everyone, Here's five bucks. Not everyone is, you know. No, true. I, I Yeah, that's true. I've been very lucky that the places that I've worked were, you know, one was a little chaotic on, in Wildwood. But other than that, it was. You know, the, the one we grew up in was family that, you know, Jake was unbelievable. You know, you work with them, you, especially like I said, when you when you're starting out with the kids, whether it's grill guy, you know, usually grill guy, it's not. It, they'll start in prep and doing dishes and then work their way up when because they can't really use the equipment yet. Yeah. Type of deal. But it's usually the younger ones are the phone girls or the counter girls. Uh huh. That's when you get them the young. But it's like I said, you give them a few hours just to get their feet wet. Yeah. With. A security blanket like like i will talk to the girls and say listen i'm gonna back off like a lifeguard let them go in the deep end a little bit yeah see see if they start swimming or see if they're drowning yeah, yeah, yeah. then we go in and you know but some take a year or two and that's why i'm like i'll give you lunch money and i'll waste my lunch money for two years but i know your future investment is once you turn 17 18 you're gonna be a rock star yeah sometimes they hit the ground running yeah like your two girls your your wives they some hit the ground running and it's just like this is natural yeah and it's like how you act when you think nobody's watching of course so watch Integrity. them like if you're making a pizza or whatever and they're taking the customer's order and the customer leaves to go you know cross the street to get a, a bagel or whatever and come back does that does that employee realize i took your order oh your stuff's right here or do they come up and say hi can i help you and it's like well you just helped me 10 minutes ago yeah you know what i mean yeah if they're aware of their surroundings, right from the get go, it's like that's a rock star. Yeah, you know what I mean they're they're gonna get it. No no problems. The others need to be coached into it. And it's well, again, I, I always go back to sports, but you know, some people don't know how to throw a baseball right away. Yeah, but they could end up in the major leagues at some point. You know what I mean? If you teach them the right way and slow and steady wins the race, uh, no matter what. Yeah. And what you're talking about too, like that recognition or like the, uh, of a customer's face or like sense of urgency. Sometimes that's not really even trainable. Like, you, no, it's like you, you have, have it or you, you don't. don't. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, there are times, I mean, I have to let people go. It's just like, this is not a right fit. Yeah. You know, and you don't want to, I don't think I, I don't think I've ever used the word you're fired. No, never. Damn. I say this is not working out. I've never word fired. Cause I think that, especially with a young kid. It, that's hard because then they're like, oh, I can never work anywhere. You know what I mean? It's just it's, sometimes it's not a right fit for you here yeah. or, me, you know, me yeah. with, you know, it's like, it's like, so it's like, hey, you know, I'm sorry this isn't working out. Uh, you know, we got to go in another direction, something like that. Yeah. Let them off the hook because who knows? They, it, they might not mature for a couple of years and they it could full circle and say, you run into them and say, what are you doing at the store? And they're like, oh, I'm in between jobs. They're like, oh, you want to help out? You know, type of thing. Try again. Yeah, try yeah. again. And they got it. Yeah. Because they just weren't ready at, yeah. you know, 15, 16 years old. Not many people are. I know. I mean, like, it, it's a fast paced business. Like you're saying, like, when it's bumping on a Friday night, you get flowers everywhere. People are coming in. They want their orders. They're hangry. Yes. Yeah. And not, a, I mean, the restaurant industry is really just not for everyone. No, yeah, it's a special breed. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah, and I, like I said, I, I'm, I call, I'm a pizza shop. You know, I'm, you know, if I was, like a restaurant when they, you know, they're yelling fire this in the kitchen, and you know, they have their own terminology. Yeah, but, yeah, it's, you're right. It's 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 crazy. You have to have the, you have to have right mentality to be in food. You gotta love it, and it's got to be there because you got to eat. The world's got to eat. That's but, true. It, you know, with a lot of places closing and it's like, oh man. Do you have any plans on like, what is like, 
like not working here or selling the business or your son taking over or retirement? Like, do, do you see that? All the above. Yeah. Do you, do you see that? <laughs> or Every like day it how, changes. Yeah. I'm like, like I'm, I'm 57. So I still got a few more years. Yeah, very young. Yeah. I'll be 58 in January. So I'm not, I, I tell my son that, like, you know, when we talked a couple of years ago, I'm like, I, I got it. You know, it's probably when I'm about 52 or whatever, then 53. I'm like, I got about 10 more years in my hands before, Arthritis kicks in from the from marble and the ball, whatever, yeah. you know, but I said, physically that way, there's no rush. You do, you know, if you want to explore, you know, if he wants to take over some days, he wants to, some days he's like, ah, you know, he'd like to be in a restaurant business, but I'm like, listen, you're never, you're never going to get it easier. I mean, this is not a restaurant, you know, cause he can really cook, you know, but you're never going to have it easier than now because Brian and I have worked out all the stupidity and the kinks and the borrowing from credit cards and, you know, Peter all the to struggles, pay, all yeah. the Peter to pay Paul, yeah. you know, there's going to be bumps. There's always things like competition, more, more places are coming to the Island, but it's like, you got to weather the storm. And, and if you, you know, you store your, your nuts in the summer to get through the winter for everything, to keep it nice and flowing, you know, then, um, you know, you can tweak it however you want in the future. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I know, whatever. Then some days you don't. I'm like, well, then do I look at maybe getting a manager down the road or, or you know, promoting from within, you know, and be more an absentee owner, you know, where I'm around, but I'm not physically doing it, yeah. you know, as much. That's a possibility. And then obviously selling it is, if nobody wants it, you know, I don't see that happening. No. That, that would be the last resort. Yeah. You know what I mean? I would think my, you know, someone in the family would, would, take over or someone in the shop the, the guys have been with me for 20 years yeah you know you know that no matter what not everybody wants to be the owner or the boss well everyone um, wants oh, to geez. and then when it's time to be <laughs> true they're true, like true, oh true. no 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 yeah. no when you're the or first they one get in there the, and they're like oh yeah. shit this sucks yeah well you're the first one in the grease trap when it's overflowing yeah, uh -huh. or something like that but the fine print of ownership is you are the grunt yeah you may have the whatever title you think you have yeah but you are the grunt when anything breaks uh-huh but uh but like you said a lot of people they you know they don't want to be in charge they, yeah you know so you got to find the right person you know and, and promote like i'm not a big titles guy like yeah. i don't i don't really I, they, they people say oh you're the owner or whatever i'm like yeah i'm a worker i'm a co-worker yeah. you know i don't introduce you and say hey this is my employee yeah alex i'm like hey i work with this is alex who works with me yeah you know that type of thing yeah Never, we never really about titles and I it's, guess ego. You said, you said this last time. You, you don't like. There's no manager ch like titles or no. anything. Yeah, nobody. Yeah, you know whoever's the oldest on the on the shift. Well, it, if there's it just a problem, takes charge. yeah, because everybody give we give everybody empowerment. You know, type of deal. So there's a rule like if so, if something goes wrong, your food's wrong, uh, it's burnt, it's the you know the wrong sandwich. The girls on the phone know immediately whether you're. If you're 15 or 16 type of deal, you'll turn to the 20 year old and say, Hey, this and hand off the phone or yeah. whatever. But the rules are, we'll make you a new one. Oh, you don't want a new one. All right. We'll give you store credit for the next time you call. Yeah. Oh, you don't want that. All right. We'll give you back your money. Okay. You know what I mean? Cause it's like, it's not worth arguing with anybody over there. Cause it's how they want it. You know, it's not how you made it. It's, you know, Oh, this is, it's got, you know, uh, a tomato on it yeah well you know maybe seven out of ten people go oh, i'll just pull the tomato off yeah but some people are like ah uh -huh. you know the other three people are i want my money back yeah whatever <laughs> you and tried to kill me with yeah the tomato. i'm allergic to tomatoes yeah. and it's like you know whatever you know but that's the thing so anybody on the shift fix it and if i say i'm on vacation say listen you know I, I joke around just don't burn the place down and come back and i'll Leave fix me it alone. you know yeah. like no but you know fix it you know make the customer happy yeah. And when the girls work here, they're like, Jim, I know they're, they're just scamming us. I know we gave them the right stuff. I know that sandwich was in the bag. I gave them the slices. Yeah, I can hear Jackie. And it, yeah, Jackie. I said, Casey, I said, listen, karma, you know, like yeah. it's not worth the 10 or $15 that, you know, that they're going to bitch and moan about. Yeah. Make them happy. Give it to them. If they are scamming us karma's a bitch yeah. you know what i mean yeah, yeah. something's gonna happen to them where it'll you know yeah where you could giggle you know if say oh well you know that's you know 
what you get for stealing sandwiches. That's what shit happens. <laughs> but uh, yeah, fix it. They're just yeah. you know the, the mantra is just make the co- you know make the customer happy, whatever it is. Yeah. And, and and if those three things don't work, if you don't, by the time you give back the money and they're still bitching and moaning at you, give me the phone number. If I'm out of town, I call them. Ninety nine percent of the time, they're like, "Oh, thank you for calling yeah. me." Oh, it wasn't that bad. Of course. Well, then why were you screaming? Of course. At the girl, and you know, and, and I try to when I do have to have those conversations with yeah. customers, and I've actually had had conversations where I don't think we're a good fit for you. You should call somewhere <laughs> else. <laughs> you fire your customers. And, yeah, and they're like, <laughs> "What?" I said, "Well, every time you call, it's you said every time yeah. we do it wrong." In my head, what's the common denominator with every time we do it wrong? Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Everywhere I go, my food's wrong. I go to a restaurant. What's the common denominator yeah. there? You're you. the common denominator. So however you're ordering it, and that's why I'll ask them. i say, well, how did you ask for the cheesesteak? Well, I said, I want lettuce, tomato, no onions. I said, well, if you, why don't you just say lettuce and tomato? Because when it's busy, the girl might not hear no before onions. And they break lettuce, tomato, onion. Yeah. So if you never say it and we don't hear it, we it's can't. Same. We can't put it on. Yeah. Can't put it on or can't take it off. What, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. There it is. There lies yeah. the rub. Yeah, you can't. Ple- it, you can't please everyone. Absolutely that's for can't. Sure. You can't. So that's the get back to your original question. They empower the employees to fix the problems. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's some places like you have hold on, and then they call you. The so and so. Can we give them a credit? Yes. Yes. You know what I mean? That should never happen. That customer should never wait five minutes for you to call the boss or the manager, either in the building to come up front or do whatever, or call them on home, at home yeah. and say, can we fix this? Yes. Fix it. Make the customer happy no matter what. Yeah. Because if they're happy, they will give you a shot. You know, if you really piss them off, they probably won't come back. True. There's always going to be a one and done. Yeah. But, you know, it. you know, you take care of the people that take care of you. Yeah. You know, we get our, most of our complaints on Yelp or Google and you look at the dates, they're, they're May to September. Yeah. You know, Memorial Day to Labor Day and, you know, they'll rip us and it's like, okay, there's maybe five or six, whether they get on Facebook and start chatting away and all that, that happens now. Yeah. And, uh, but it's the, 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 the 900 or a thousand people on the island that don't say anything, they come twice a week. They're the, they're, when you see a person, and especially if you see they order food uh, for lunch and then they order food for dinner, so that's the biggest compliment you can get. Of course. That they order from you twice in one day. Yeah. Two separate meals. Not like they ordered and then called back 10 minutes later to add on something. Yeah. They ordered twice in the same day from your place. That's better than And any I tell review. everybody, I said, that's, that is the best compliment you can ever get. And they're like, oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's, they thought about you twice and you did something right that they called you back that day. Yeah. You know what I mean? What is one failure you can share through your career that really helped you out and, and, and made you grow? In the beginning, well, once we were on our own, I, that's where I, one of the arguments I get with my brother is he wanted to do other things, let, let, you know, like expand or whatever. And it's like, if we would have stayed slower, longer, it would have been a lot better come this time in my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of people, if you got a good place, it's okay to have one good place and a good life. Yeah. If you're coaching and you're doing, if you're doing all the things, you're going on vacation and you're have your family time and you're making money, it's okay. Yeah. Some people, oh, I got to have another place. I have to have two more places. Yeah. That can drive you. If the places depend on where they are. You know what I mean? You try not to be right on top of each other, but you don't want to be too far apart. Yeah. Because then you're like driving back and forth. Yeah. You're finding out now. Yeah. But but if you have the right people, and and if like say when we split and Brian went one way and I stayed out of all of us, I'm the only one that's been here the whole 38 years. Yeah. You know, our partner's gone for 35 years. Brian's come and gone. But I'm the only constant that's been here the whole 38 years. So that's that, That's what I would say. It's, it's okay to be okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, to be okay with yeah. just 
being okay. Yeah. Some people think, oh, I got to do more. And it's like, I'm not saying be lazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, don't be just satisfied. But you got to look at the whole thing. Because there's, there's, you have two lives. If you're single, balls to the wall. Yeah. But if you have a family, you can't go threatening finances down the road with expansions or stupidity. And that's what we did. We went into certain places and, and it took me years to fill in those holes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now I'm like, no more places. That's, I'm concentrating on brigantine. You can do whatever if you want on your own, but it's on your own. Yeah. I'm not putting any money into it. You do whatever you want. This is it. And since I've done that, my life has in this business has gone a lot better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Was there was there plans to open up more? Did you and Brian want to open up a bunch of them? Never. No. Never. We never wanted to franchise or anything like that. But it was always things like it comes back like we got burnt because in like our fifth or sixth year, uh, a place in Wildwood on the boardwalk where we grew up going. You know, we grew up going there for vacations and then we worked two summers there. So you have that, ah, oh, you know. Yeah, yeah let's open up Let's one go there. back to yeah. where we were kids. Yeah. And it's like, no, nah, you didn't have to do that. Yeah. Because then that took like five years to get you, out of that hole. So you guys opened up one in Wildwood? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. We, we expanded into a boardwalk on yeah. Wildwood. And uh, for like two summers. The worst two summers that Wildwood had. You know um, what I mean? It was like, man, they have what call senior weeks down here. Like kids from Philadelphia go to Wildwood after they graduate and all that. Well, it's a one big party. It's like spring break for yeah. colleges. You go, you know, it was on the news like every other weekend. Uh, the kids did this. They, you know, drunk. They, they, you know, they, they, they set something on fire. There was two fires was on the riot. boardwalk. Yeah. On, like a, we kicked a field goal, like our block of the boardwalk, the other one block over, one block over had had gotten some kind of fires in them at, in the in the back to back summers, and it's like, dude. And yet, then you're weather oriented. Like if you're on the boardwalk, if it rains, nobody's going to the boardwalk. Yeah, they're staying in the house. They're they're going to maybe the arcades or something like that. But you're not walking and get. It's all foot traffic. You know, it's rare that you get the phone calls and deliveries going out of a boardwalk. Yeah, you know, we're here. You're on the street. Too, right? yeah. Oh yeah, it's usually always, yeah. and there's always. You know, restaurants back on the street, off the boardwalks. Yeah, that that's their business. And then they're like, "Hey, you're you're infringing on my turf." Yeah, you know? but it's weather driven. Bad weather, you're having a horrible day. Yeah, nice sunny day, you're out and about. And there's a million people on the boardwalk, so yeah. it fluctuates. We're here, it's a steady. If they're on the island and they want pizza or sandwiches, you have a good chance of them coming in. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, but yeah, that's uh, so that didn't work steady. out. It didn't. That didn't work out. Then we were in a bowling alley. Uh, uh, friends of my brothers were in a bowling alley. So that's another mistake. We were there a couple years. By the time we got it rolling, they went to like a bowling convention and they, and the, the, they were told, if you want to control your destiny, you got to control everything. So they you kicked you out? So they kicked my brother out. It just as it, and it's like, well, that's fine and dandy. And we come back to anybody can eat. Yeah. Who are you going to have make your pizza? The guy who's spraying the shoes at the bowling alley? Yeah. All of a sudden, the bowling alley's closed. Dang. Yeah. It's like you were getting money every month, like a nice rent percentage yeah, type yeah. deal. You ate. You didn't have to worry good. about nothing. Yeah. All of a sudden, you're like, oh, we got to take over. We had to own the whole, you know, if we're going to survive. Next thing, the partners were fighting. Get but then that was, an, that was another snowball. Yeah. And that took years to get out of because you're like, all right, well, that's the credit card. You're paying, all right, let, let's do this shit because you, you bought a piece of equipment. And then you're gone. Now you only have three, four thousand on the credit card. That what shouldn't be there. Yeah. And it takes a while because you can't just. You have other guys that like they expand, and then it, it's not a pyramid, but like a house of cards. You got to the golden goose. You got to control. You know, protect the golden goose. Yeah. You have these other fringe uh, businesses that could end up taking down the golden goose because this one's paying for that one to stay alive. Yeah. You got to know when to say no, and it's like. Is that worth my time? Is that worth not making any money and the headache? And you know when to cut things off. Yeah, because well, I think people don't understand that you made this comment last time about like digging a hole. I mean, like when you open up a business, it's one giant hole, hole. and people don't understand that like it takes years to get out of it. Absolutely. <clears throat> and so you can't even build a, a solid foundation on it. It's like a huge investment, but it's a construction site. 
It's you know? exactly what it is. You're and right. The, and then exactly. when you have to walk away from a hole and you're refilling it with one of your other businesses, you're I mean, just, yeah, you, you're just, you're, you're digging a hole yeah, over here. Yeah. Yeah. So you have two yeah, little exactly, holes instead of one exactly. big hole. But yeah, it's, it's absolutely <clears throat> true. You don't want, if once you can fill the hole, life becomes so much easier. Yeah. It's just like life in general. If you're in credit card debt and you get out of debt, now all of a sudden you can start saving money, you yeah. know, but you, you can't rob Peter to pay Paul. Yep. You got to know this isn't working or, you know, it's time to cut ties. Yeah, no one to get it. out. Yeah. Cut your losses and, and, and get running because it can slow you down on your other things. And it is, and, you know, personally, I would think I'm probably, I don't know, five to 10 years behind where I should be at this age. You know, because if I didn't those. do, if we didn't do the stupid stuff 25 years ago. Yeah. Because it takes that long sometimes to, to get out. You know, yeah. To, 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 to dig out from it. So I would say, yeah, that my biggest thing is don't run, walk. Yeah. Take it you slow. Know? Yeah. If you, if you can jog a little bit, jog. But the guys that want to go from A to Z, uh, some make it. Yeah. Most I would think, don't. I think the odds are against them. Yeah. My opinion. Yeah. All right. Well, this is my final and maybe most important question. What or who is the greatest band or artist of all time? Whoa. If I had one concert that I could go to and that'd be it the yeah. rest of my life. Probably the boss. Bruce. Oh, all right. Perfect. Probably do Great a little, answer. Little Bruce. All right. If it had to be a genre and I, because I, I, I like country. Brown. Okay. They would be the two. If I was my old Zach Brown my, opens. Bruce headlines the show. Oh, that'd be sweet. There we go. A two for one. But I always thought back in the day, if I had a, if I was stuck on an island and I only had one DVD at the time, would have been James Taylor's greatest hits. Great. Also great album. You can listen to that all day. Yeah. Whether you're driving in a car, working, whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not too, you know what I mean? Sometimes it, you you like relaxing. music and it's too too loud. Yeah, you're like oh, I got to turn the shit down. But you're driving in the car, windows down. James Taylor, little you're JT. Just, yeah, yeah. James Taylor. That, yeah, he'd still be up there. Well, he's oh, great. Yeah. The, all, those are all three great artists. The Boss, though, very Drew, Jersey. If you had one concert, who would you go to? Oh my gosh, no one's ever flipped this question around on me. Oh uh, wow! Yeah, hey. I know. I know. I know. Come and, to New Jersey I, for I, some first. I feel like I should have this like on the top of my head. Uh, that is a great question. Uh, honestly, probably, and this is probably going to sound lame to people, but uh, like Dave Matthews Band. Never seen him. Dave Matthews and Band. And I heard he's great. I got a buddy of mine who works for Live Nation. Yeah. He's got like Dave on his phone. Like he's does like security and stuff yeah. like that. He's like, he's one of the nicest guys in the world. Like what you see, I, that's all about comes down to business. Yeah. What you see is what you get. Yeah. That's what you should be. If, if you're going to be an asshole, be an asshole 24-7. If you're going to be a nice guy, be a nice guy 24-7. None of this behind the scenes stuff. Don't where, be fake. Yeah. yeah. Don't be fake at anything you do. Yeah. But that's I heard. Matthews is a good guy. Yeah. I mean, I've he, never seen him. His live shows are like three hours and he jams. So I said, saw him like 35 times when I was younger. I haven't. Yeah. I, I was like, I follow him around. They're like kind of a jam band. But yeah. I haven't seen him since I was well, like that, 22. That's the thing. Like if I got three hours, like boss is going to be three hour concert. Yeah. Of pounding, like jumping out of your seat. Yeah. Almost all the time. 30 years ago, I went and saw Carl uh, Santana. Three hour concert. Yeah. First hour, all the hits. Yeah. Second hour guitar solos third hour hour bongos <laughs> i'm like just Still give me says, the hour just yeah, give me the hour make it make an hour and 20 minutes i'll yeah. take a little bongos little guitar and, and everybody's happy yeah uh, i was like i'm out I had, it's the only concert leave, i ever had to leave i'm like of? i can't do this i mean i'm I, looking at my watch going Ugh, i should be sleeping now yeah first hour was great yeah yeah i'm like should have left after the first hour. should have left had no clue. Yeah, Dave Matthews will play like, like a there will be like a fourteen minute, uh, violin solo on like Watchtower, one of his songs. But I'm I'm there for it. Like so the they're longer all and breaks. crazier stuff. Yeah, all the band they're just taking yeah, a nap. They're like yeah, getting something to eat. Yeah, <laughs> everyone walks off stage. Yeah, you yeah. do a fourteen minute. Yeah. you do a fourteen minute. Well, they're all playing in the background, but they're like just jamming. I don't know. Yeah. It's crazy, but yeah. Uh, 
Note to self, don't go see Carlos Santana, I guess. Or just stay for the first hour. He could change it, but you never know. Yeah. You know, the other one I, I said was, uh, I think would be a good concert until a couple of my guys went. Steve Miller. Oh, Steve I've seen, Miller. I've seen Steve Miller a lot. He's one that goes good. off on a tangent. It was good. They said he went and uh, Fly Like an Eagle had bongos in it. Uh, dude. And he does because he wants to play it for himself now. And it's like, you made millions of dollars off playing it the way we bought it. That's not how he wants to do it. No. He, he brought out a rapper when I saw him. Yeah, it was. I was like, "What? What, what is, is going on here? Yeah. This is not the Steve Miller I wanted to right. see." Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, he's trying to evolve as an artist still, so I can respect that. But I'm trying to listen to "Fly Like an Eagle." I'm the trying right to. Yeah, I want to. I want to hear the shit I bought. Yeah, not the shit that you think you want to. I <laughs> yeah. want to buy. I know everyone wants to play their new stuff. Yeah, play the hits. I tell you, who's another good concert? Yeah. Saw him twice in one year. I haven't seen him since. Rod Stewart. Oh, I can see it. Right. You on kicks, my money. No, he kicks soccer balls. Yeah. All of a sudden, they're they coming out. We saw him in Atlantic City at an outdoor venue uh, at the old Golden Nugget back 30 yeah. years ago, and then at the Spectrum in Philly. All of a sudden, soccer ball comes out from the site. He starts head bumping it, you know, kicking it, boom, boom, boom. Boom! He boots it to the other end of the stadium. I'm like, holy shit. He's like an avid soccer player. Avid. Yeah. I mean, you know, where he grew up. I yeah. think he even owned a team, but... He was booting these balls at upper decks. Everybody's getting a souvenir, like type of thing. Like a dozen balls he kicked out. Just playing I don't know if he do it now stage. at hundred years old, but yeah, he probably he might break a hip. But yeah. Like, yeah, like just buy stones. a new one. If you never stop moving, yeah. You know, you know, it's the guys that you know, they're running around and then they sit on the couch for a year or two. Yeah. They can't Jagger never stops running. No, so. the dude's got moves. Yeah. I didn't ask this. Do you guys use Instagram? No. No. I don't believe so. You got, my you, sister-in-law would handle she, you've got to avoid and, all the bullshit you know you don't got the, i'm a dinosaur you don't, you don't have to worry about i'm i'll come to the island if your son doesn't want the business i'll take it you know no third of california yeah i gotta get the fuck out of there uh the no third party you don't you're not really worried about instagram and you're booming you just no have credit these cards. You, and no credit cards that's the that's the business model i want well, in a couple of years, you sell everything in L.A., move uh, back. You let you me know. You have babysitters. You let, Both of you guys you all come back. Oh, uh, we, we just got to get our wives on board. They like L.A. They love L.A. Yeah. But. I just had a buddy move to San Diego. Yeah. I'm like, oh. And they're like, oh, is it nice? There? Someone was telling me, like, oh, he, he moved to San Diego. I'm like, I haven't seen him. I said, oh, his wife's job took him there. I said, oh, that's going to be a hard life living with like 72 to 75 degree weather all year long and like a dozen days of rain. Yeah. And it's like, they're like, oh, it's that nice? I'm like, yeah, San Diego is that nice. It's nice. It's nice. But LA, I, the traffic, I think would kill there's me. There's traffic. There's a lot of things that will kill you. But uh, we're not gonna, we'll get, we can talk about that yeah, off the Yeah, that's pod. a whole different. Uh, yeah. When I come to LA, we'll talk about that. Okay. All right. Jen, <laughs> thank you so much for doing this. This, My was, pleasure. this was awesome. I don't wanna know.